And then we've got basically a nice distant model of Chris Phoenix uh, without the hair, though, which is too bad, but that'll come later. That's a good animatic version. Um, to really get in there and, you know, kind of start banging around character previs and stuff like that, or just placement and scale and stuff. Um, one of the other good purposes that this model serves, like I said earlier, with all of these little joint spheres that kind of end up spritzed around the character, um, you know, this. Let me hide a few of these other pieces here. Um, things like the wrist, elbow, and whatever. Uh, at this point, you know, someone could take this and start rigging, you know, a rough uh, animation rig uh, to start shooting off for, you know, previs animators uh, and other, you know, pre-production guys on, you know, the project. Uh, I think I went through the added uh, detail of putting the, the fingernail surfaces on this guy. Uh, at one point in the other the other example model I had, but uh, yeah, it's a, this is a good start um, stopping point to make another version because um, we're going to use this. We could could clear out the uh, initial layer, which I've already done. I've already done my shift S and I've got a version seven, so I'm going to delete that guy, uh, put that guy in the front row. And you could actually do remove layer and stuff like that, but it, it's easy just to copy and paste and stuff, and it's not that big a deal. Uh, but yeah, at this point, you know, you can pass this off um, or start talking to your art director about any rigging concerns you have. If you're going to be also, if you're also going to be doing the rigging and stuff like that, um, whether or not you want to change the the orientation of, excuse me, um, you know, the legs that we talked about earlier, where you wanted a T pose, and unfortunately the feet kind of collide with one another. But if you want, if at one point you had a character who didn't have feet like this, or they overlap, or even if you did, if you wanted to be sure if you were going to be rigging this character, if you wanted to be sure that the T pose was was flush uh, and not, you know, slightly adrift uh, like this is right now, uh, that's something you can go over at that point or, or earlier. At some point in the production, you know, if you've identified that as a problem, as I know some guys I've worked with uh, would probably do, if if that's going to be a problem, you know, it's something you you want to solve before you're at this point. If not, I hate to say it, but, you know, there are points, uh, even productions that I've been in, where uh, decisions like that are made, where the previs model is kind of just completely thrown out, and there's a huge redesign effort, and, you know, it happens, you know, and you're going to have to kind of roll with those punches. But this is one of those points, you know, you, you've saved a new version, we're, we're going to get ready to get into the nitty-gritty of uh, actually building this guy. Um, like I said, I'm going to kind of start at uh, kind of a generic area, because... Uh, you know, there's there's no one else in this production at at the moment except me. And you know, one of the things I want to do is kind of warm up to what is going to be the task around the head. You know, and just kind of, kind of get comfortable. You know, building the uh, the rest of the character before I, I you know I tackle that really complex piece of it. I don't want to. I, you know, I want to have uh, something I can. Just like I, the reason I, I I did this model, I want to have at every stage. You know, something to something to really uh, concrete and uh, full of results. And I'm actually going to switch back to uh, the first previs model I made. Maybe I'll, uh, I'll uh, you know, uh, copy and paste between different versions of uh, of this character. You can see I've already kind of made you know uh, test versions of different parts of the character and stuff like that. But you know, they're rough. They're very very close to one another. I like I like certain parts of this previs model uh, versus the other one. Not you know not not to mention some of the surfacing, like the forearms in here, I think came out with uh, a more interesting um, muscle pattern, you know. And you know, it, like I said, I spent a lot of time in this phase, um, uh, typically because you know this is where you can solve an enormous number of problems. Uh, like for instance, uh, this is this is probably a more ideal uh, quadricep formation for me than uh, I think the other one represented. Uh, uh, these aren't these legs aren't quite as beefy as uh, you know the other version. I think the serratus anterior muscles. I hope I'm getting. I hope I'm getting that right. Uh, on this version, and the abdominal muscles came out a little better, as well as this, this definition around the rib cage. Um, but like like I said, you you should take advantage of this versioning feature within Lightwave. It's built into the software, and um, it's separate. It, it gives you an easy way to to iterate uh, the models that you're making. Without having to do a lot of uh, 
uh, file management uh, beforehand. You know, you're not control S, save as. I think you've seen me do that a couple of times. It's very common. Uh, you know, you can switch that uh, keyboard shortcut when you want to, or um, whenever you want to, to whatever you're comfortable with. But, you know, I like using that, that it's built into both layout and modeler. Uh, so I can get different vi revisions on animations I'm working on or rigging or, you know, test animations and stuff like that, as well as, you know, different models and um, you know, different versions. But this this test version, while I was kind of dreaming up, you know, how I was going to uh, do this tutorial, um, this is what I came up with working on my own. And I'm going to I'm going to kind of cheat, you know, a little bit here because I kind of like the way this this head version came out a little better. And I'm going to. I'm gonna tuck that in here, and then do that that mask um, that I liked a lot. You can actually see it. You know, I'm gonna have to kind of edit this a little bit just to make sure all the little pieces fit. But the it, I, I really did like the way um, that other technique I used uh, on the head came out. Uh, I think it I think it was a little more. Uh, a little more accurate, uh, so it's more interesting. And I'm gonna actually see. I'm gonna switch the viewport here. So I want to kind of. I want to triple some of these polygons. Let's see if they triple in the right direction. Uh, I'm gonna need. No, I'm gonna actually need these to triple um, in a different direction. So I'm gonna get that guy. Because I want that bridge of the nose to come out for the mask. And really, I should just really uh, stop at this point and kind of move on. But you know, I really did like you know that that two sphere technique there. It gave it gave a little more indication of the the uh, the face. Um, 